In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion on the various differences that exist between our pair of enantiomers. Now, we already said that there's a physical difference between our pair of enantiomers. In other words, our pair of enantiomers rotate plane polarized light the same amount of degrees, but in opposite directions. So, for example, if the R enantiomer rotates our plane polarized light in the clockwise direction, our S enantiomer will rotate that light in the counterclockwise direction. So our pair of enantiomers rotate our plane polarized light the same amount of degrees, but in opposite direction. Now, beside the physical difference, there's also a chemical difference that exists between our pair of enantiomers. And let's examine that on this board. So here we have our enantiomer 1, and here we have our enantiomer 2. So these two molecules are mirror images. So let's say this is the R enantiomer and this is our S enantiomer. So each enantiomer has four different groups attached. This is our stereogenic carbon. So let's examine the interaction of this enantiomer with a chiral molecule. So here we have our achiral molecule, which simply means that this is not a chiral carbon. It's not a stereogenic carbon. We have three identical groups attached to this carbon. So let's see how these two molecules interact. Well, if we place them this way, we have the purple group of this enantiomer interacting with the methyl group of this achiral molecule. And likewise, we have this green group interacting with a methyl group. Now, let's examine how the S enantiomer, enantiomer number two, interacts with the same exact achiral molecule. So we take this, we flip it, and let's examine what the interaction is and how it differs from this interaction. So in this interaction, we also have the green group of our enantiomer interacting with the methyl and the purple group of our enantiomer interacting with the methyl. In other words, there is absolutely no difference between the interaction of enantiomer 1 and enantiomer 2 with a chiral molecule. And in fact, that's always true. Our two enantiomers, our pair of enantiomers, will always interact in the same exact identical way with achiral molecules. And now, let's look at a different story. Let's, instead of using a chiral molecule, we're going to use chiral molecule. So that means this carbon is stereogenic carbon. It's attached to four different non-identical groups. So let's, <clears throat> so let's take the same exact enantiomer and let's see how it interacts with our chiral molecule. Now we have the purple group interacting with the ethyl and the green group interacting with our hydroxide. Now let's take the mirror image of this enantiomer number two and let's interact it with the same chiral molecule. So we simply flip this. Now our purple interacts with our hydroxide and the green interacts with our ethyl group. Whereas here we have the green and hydroxide interaction and the purple and the ethyl interaction. So now there's a difference in the way these two enantiomers interact with our chiral molecules. And in fact, that's always true. Whenever we take our pair of enantiomers and interact those enantiomers with chiral molecules, there will be a chemical distinction, a chemical difference between the interactions of the two molecules. So, let's summarize. Enantiomers interact identically with achiral molecules while they interact differently with chiral molecules. And in fact, this is the basis of chiral resolution in which you can separate the pair of enantiomers by the fact that they interact differently with chiral molecules. 